fixed-fold cameras. Your successful completion of the demonstrated repair ultimately depends on the quality of your tools, the condition of your camera, and most importantly, your repair ability. Partial disassembly of the Nikon Photomic FTN prism begins with removal of the upper leatherette. Soak the leatherette with isopropyl alcohol and peel away. Remove the four screws holding the upper shell. While removing the upper shell screws, consider the identifying factors of the Photomic FTN. It has an additional front release lever and the shutter speeds are visible in the viewfinder. With the leatherette and sheet metal cover removed, two trim potentiometers will be accessible. The front trim is for meter sensitivity and the rear trim is for the battery test. Sensitivity adjustment affects the, the battery test adjustment, but not vice versa. But for now, we will continue on with the disassembly by removing the three wires attached to the three terminals. The front is the ground, the middle wire is the battery negative terminal, and the back wire is to the CDS cells. The ground screw needs to be completely removed from the ground strap to get it to release from the terminal. Now flip the prism over and remove the four screws holding the base into the top unit assembly. If the aperture linkage mechanism is sticking, then the front nameplate will have to be removed. It's held on with three screws. The aperture linkage in this prism is working smoothly, so it doesn't really need to be accessed to be cleaned, but we demoed the screw removal anyway. Since we're not cleaning the aperture linkage, we'll go straight to the removal of the lower prism assembly. Now we can access the uh, resistor base rings and clean them, but do not use spray cleaner because the risk of getting cleaner and residue on the hard to reach optical surfaces is too great. So just gently clean the surface of the resistor with isopropyl alcohol saturated onto the tip of a cotton cleaning swab. Okay, now let's install the voltage dropping diode. We'll put it right here between the battery and the circuit. Loosen the prism clip to remove the wire from underneath it and then unsolder the wire from the uh, CDS circuit. Now install the diode in line. Note the position of the cathode band. This modification will allow the meter to operate accurately using two silver 625 batteries or two lithium 625 batteries. If this modification is not done, the meter can be used accurately using two zinc 625 batteries. The drawback to the zinc battery is that they have a fairly short life and they continue to deteriorate regardless of whether you're using the battery or not. The advantage to the zinc battery is that you miss out on all the fun of installing the diode modification to your meter. Heat shrink tubing should have been slipped onto the wire before the diode was soldered in place. With the diode in place, slip the heat sink tubing over the diode. And if we could get the tubing to cooperate, we could then apply a little heat from the soldering iron and shrink the tubing around the diode. Okay, enough already. There. Finally. It's in place. And neatly tuck in the lead wire. Don't apply so much heat that you end up unsoldering your connections. Just enough to shrink the tubing. Alternately work the tip of the soldering iron around either side of the tubing and underneath the tubing until it shrinks into place. The battery lead wire is not wanting to stay in place, so we'll just route it underneath the prism clip like it originally was to help keep it in position. Make sure the bulk of the diode will clear as the uh, two assemblies are brought back into position and pressed together. Once you are certain that uh, two pieces have seated properly, the screws can be put back into place. The mechanics of the meter work as such. The shutter speed and ASA setting control turns the potentiometer resistive 
element of the uh, operator ring resistor. At the same time, the aperture linkage moves the contact wiper on the inside surface of the ring resistor. However, there are no stops and the resistor ring can wrap around from maximum to minimum on a long exposure in a wide aperture, which actually would cause a meter to stop functioning because the contactor loses connection with the uh, base of the resistor ring. The functionality of this sequence probably should have been checked before the two prism pieces were reassembled. But nonetheless, we will continue with the reassembly by attaching the wires to the, their perspective terminals. The blue CDS wire to the back terminal, the negative battery wire to the center terminal, and the ground strap to the front terminal. With two 1.5 volt 625 silver batteries installed, the battery test button can be pressed. If it functions properly and stops in the proper position, then nothing else needs to be done and the diode did the job. Okay, with everything working, we can go ahead and reassemble. The battery output voltage can also be checked with a voltmeter. If the battery check is not working properly or the voltage is off, a different diode might need to be tried. Now the meter can also be checked for proper operation and the sensitivity can be adjusted if needed. A calibrated light source is helpful or uh, another camera that the meter can be checked against can also be used. Of course, once satisfied with the meter accuracy and sensitivity, the uh, reassembly can be completed. Thank you for watching. Inspired? Check back for new video postings.